I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening and thank you. Please be seated. Call forward for the oath of office, swearing in of elected officials. Okay, please. Good evening. <coughs> We're going to start with the selectmen. So I need Russell Bridal, Richard Griffin, and James Waddell is not here this evening, correct? Raise your right hand, repeat after me. I state your name. I'm Mr. Do you solemnly swear? Solemnly swear. That I will bear faith and true allegiance. That I will bear faith and true allegiance. To the United States of America. To the United, United States, States of America. America. And the state of New Hampshire. And the state of New Hampshire. And will support the constitutions thereof. And will support the constitution thereof. So help me God. So help me God. I state your name. I, Russell Bridle. Do solemnly and sincerely. Do solemnly and sincerely. Swear and affirm. Swear and affirm. That I will faithfully and impartially. I will faithfully yes. and impartially. I will faithfully and impartially. Discharge and perform. Discharge, discharge and perform. All the duties incumbent on me. All the, all the duties incumbent on me. As a selectman. As a selectman. According to the best of my abilities. According to the best of my abilities. Agreeably to the rules and regulations. Agreeably to the rules and regulations. Of this constitution. Of this constitution. And the laws of the state of New Hampshire. And the laws of the state of New Hampshire. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> and each Moderator Bob Saza. <laughs> I, Robert A. Casaza. I, Robert A. Casaza. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will bear faith and true allegiance. That I will bear faith and true allegiance. To the United States of America. To the United States of America. And the state of New Hampshire. And the state of New Hampshire. And will support the constitutions thereof. And will support the constitutions thereof. So help me God. So help me God. I, Robert A. Casaza. I, Robert A. Casaza. Do solemnly and sincerely. Do solemnly and sincerely. Swear and affirm. Swear and affirm. That I will faithfully and impartially. That I will faithfully and impartially. Discharge and perform. Discharge and perform. All the duties and Incumbent on me. All the duties incumbent on me. As moderator. As moderator. According to the best of my abilities. According to the best of my abilities. Agreeably to the rules and regulations. Agreeably to the rules and regulations. Of this constitution. Of this constitution. And the laws of the state of New Hampshire. And the laws of the state of New Hampshire. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. Ellen Lavin, Treasurer. I, Ellen Lavin. I, Ellen Lavin. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will bear faith and true allegiance. That I will bear faith and true allegiance to the United States of America. The United States of America. And the state of New Hampshire. And the state of New Hampshire. And will support the constitutions thereof. And will support the constitutions. So help me God. So help me God. I, Ellen Lavin. I, Ellen Lavin. Do solemnly and sincerely. Do solemnly and sincerely. Swear and affirm. Swear and affirm that I will faithfully and impartially. That I will faithfully and impartially discharge and perform. Discharge and perform all the duties incumbent on me. All the duties incumbent on me as treasurer. As treasurer according to the best of my abilities. According to the best of my abilities. Agreeably to the rules and regulations. Agreeably to the rules and regulations of this constitution. Of this constitution and the laws of the state of New Hampshire. And the laws of the state of New Hampshire. So help me God. So help me God. John Troiano um, did call me and say that he was not going to be able to make it tonight. So. <laughs> Library trustee Robert Lamoth. Deborah Knowlton called today and said she would be in on Wednesday 
and Sheriff on team. Do this all by yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Raise your right hand, repeat after me. I'm Sharon Fontaine. I'm Sharon Fontaine. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will bear faith and true allegiance. That I will bear faith and true allegiance. To the United States of America. To the United States of America. And the state of New Hampshire. And the state of New Hampshire. And will support the constitutions thereof. And will support the constitutions thereof. So help me God. So help me God. I'm Sharon Fontaine. I'm Sharon Fontaine. Do solemnly and sincerely. Do solemnly and sincerely. Swear and affirm. Swear and affirm. That I will faithfully and impartially. That I will faithfully and impartially. Discharge and perform. Discharge and perform. All the duties incumbent on me. All the duties incumbent on me. As library trustee. As library trustee. According to the best of my abilities. According to the best of my abilities. Agreeably to the rules and regulations. Agreeably to the rules and regulations. Of this constitution. Of this constitution and the laws of the state of New Hampshire. And the laws of the state of New Hampshire. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Cemetery trustee Matt Shaw. All right, Budget Committee. <laughs> Timothy Citizen Jones, Steve LeBranch, David Wood, Michael Pierce, and Sonny Kravitz. He's not here. Okay. <coughs> Raise your right hand, repeat after me. I, I take Timothy your name. Citizen Jones. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. swear. That I will bear faith and true allegiance. That I will bear faith and true allegiance to the United States of America. To the United, United States, States of America. And the state of New Hampshire. And the state of New Hampshire. And will support the constitutions thereof. And will support the constitutions thereof. So help me God. So help me God. I state your name. I to be citizen John. Do solemnly and sincerely. Do solemnly and sincerely. Swear and affirm. Swear and affirm. That I will faithfully and impartially. That I will faithfully and impartially. Discharge and perform. Discharge and perform. All the duties incumbent on me. All the duties incumbent upon me as a member of the budget committee. As a member of the budget, budget committee, committee, according to the best of my ability, according to the best of my ability, agreeably to the rules and regulations, agreeably to the rules and regulations of this constitution, of this constitution, and the laws of the state of New Hampshire, and the laws of the state of New Hampshire. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Work out of the way, David and Michael. Thank you. <laughs> Two places. Yes. Yep. I hope Steve signed in the right place. Yeah, we I copy him. <laughs> yes, that's perfect. There we go. Thank you. Okay, zoning board. Ed St. Pierre and Tom McGurk. Mm -hmm. And Norma Collins. We want to put you in the middle. <laughs> you could be up front. <laughs> Raise your right hand, repeat after me. I state your name. Do solemnly swear that I will bear faith and true allegiance to the United States of America and the state of New Hampshire and will support the constitutions thereof. So help me God. I state your name. Do solemnly and sincerely swear and affirm that I will faithfully and impartially discharge and perform. All the duties incumbent on me as a member of the zoning board, according to the best of my ability, agreeably to the rules and regulations of this constitution and the laws of the state of New Hampshire.
<laughs> I know. Should I put them in bold lines? I don't know. <laughs> okay. Changing my hat to Campin School District clerk. Maybe a shepherd. <coughs> My hand is here to make I, Andrea Shepherd, I, Andrea Shepherd, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear that I will bear faith and true allegiance, that I will bear faith and true allegiance to the United States of America, to the United States of America, and the state of New Hampshire, and the state of New Hampshire, and will support the constitutions thereof, and will support the constitution thereof. So help me God. So help me God. I, Andrea Shepherd, I, Andrea Shepherd, do solemnly and sincerely, do solemnly and sincerely swear and affirm, swear and affirm that I will faithfully and impartially that I will faithfully and impartially discharge and perform discharge and perform all the duties incumbent on me all the duties incumbent upon me as a member of the school board as a member of the school board according to the best of my abilities according to the best of my abilities agreeably to the rules and regulations agreeably to the rules and regulations of this constitution of this constitution and the laws of the state of New Hampshire and the laws of the state of New Hampshire so help me God so help me God congratulations <laughs> Is there any cushion here? No. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. So for Winnicott School District Clerk now. <laughs> Um, school board, we have David Gant and Francis Henderson. Raise your right hands, repeat after me. I and state your name. I, I David, David Gant. Do, do solemnly swear, do solemnly solemnly swear. swear. That, I will bear faith and true allegiance. that I will bear faith and true allegiance. Faith and true allegiance, but good. <laughs> to the United States of America. To the United States, States of America. America. And the state of New Hampshire. And, state state of New New Hampshire. Hampshire. and will support the constitutions thereof. And will support the constitutions thereof. So help me God. So help me God. I state your name. I David Anderson. Do solemnly and sincerely. Do solemnly and sincerely. Swear and affirm. Swear and affirm. That I will faithfully and impartially. That I will faithfully and impartially. Discharge and, discharge and perform. Discharge and perform. All the duties incumbent on me. All the duties incumbent on me. As a member of the school board. As a member of the school board. According to the best of my abilities. According to the best of my abilities. Agreeably to the rules and regulations. Agreeably to the rules and regulations of this constitution. Of this constitution. And the laws of the state of New Hampshire. And the laws of the state of New Hampshire. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Signature, both signature lines there, please. Thanks. Thank you. And last but not least, we have Winnicunit's um, Budget Committee. Don Janet. And Bruce Casaza um, was not able to make it this evening, so. So you're on your own. <laughs> I, Donald Janet. I, Donald Janet. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will bear faith and true allegiance. That I will bear faith and true allegiance. To the United States of America. United States of America. And the state of New Hampshire. And the state of New Hampshire. And will support the constitutions thereof. And will support the constitutions thereof. So help me God. So help me God. I, Donald Janet. I, Donald Janet. Do solemnly and sincerely. Do solemnly and sincerely. Swear and affirm. Swear and affirm. That I will faithfully and impartially. That I will faithfully and impartially. Discharge and perform. Discharge and perform. All the duties incumbent on me. All the duties incumbent upon me as a member of the budget committee. As a member of the budget committee, according to the best of my abilities. According to the best of my ability, agreeably to the rules and regulations. Agreeably to the rules and regulations of this constitution. Of this constitution and the laws of the state of New Hampshire. And the laws of the state of New Hampshire. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this one too. Excellent. Congratulations. Thank you. That's everyone. Thank you very much, Jan. Thank you. And may we please take a uh, five-minute recess while uh, those gain their seating and uh, congratulate each other or uh, make their way out of the uh, 
Assembly area. Thank you. We'll be back in five minutes promptly. Good evening and welcome back to the March 17, 2014 Selectmen's meeting. Uh, item number two, the reorganization of the Board of Selectmen. Number one, election of chairman and vice chairman. Okay. I would like to make a nomination. Yes, sir. I'd li like to nominate Phil Bean as chairman. I'll second. Is there any discussion? No. All those in favor? Three with one abstention. Number one, the election of vice chairman. I'd like to nominate Mary Louise Wolseley. I'll second that. Thank you. Any discussion? All those in favor? Well, Unanimous? I'll, I'll abstain then, Phil. Okay, three in one abstention. Number two, the appointment of member and alternate member to the Budget Committee. Is there a motion? Uh, <laughs> it's a popular <laughs> job. Uh, I'll move Rusty as a member to the Budget Committee. Okay. Is there a second, a second for that? I'll second that. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor? Three. Abstain. With okay. one abstention. And an alternate member to the Budget Committee? Motion, please. I'll volunteer if anyone cares. I will take that as a motion and uh, I will second that a motion. All those in favor? Unanimous. Number three, appointment of member and alternate member to the planning board. For the member, please. A motion. I've heard two people are interested in this. Um, I know I'm not I am interested in it, so Can, is there a are you I mean can we do a, a, a coin toss where there's where there's no. only four of us here for I'd rather wait till next week. Can we wait till all five of us are present? Oh sure. Okay. How about if we do that? Okay. So we will table this issue until there is a full board and selectmen elect uh, Waddell will be on board next week. Okay. And uh, that will go for the alternate as well. Number three, public comment period. Those that wish to make public comment. Thank you. Yes, sir, Mr. Moody. R. O. Moody. Three Thompson <laughs> Road. <laughs> <laughs> this is a new board, obviously, and if you're going to review your public comment section or segment of the agenda, uh, I hope you keep it, number one. And number two, uh, there is possibility of liberalizing and maybe in a couple of aspects, and maybe you will. Good luck. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes, Chief. William Sullivan, 12 Colonial Circle. Congratulations to the new board and to the re-election of the chairman. Um, I had only planned to come here tonight to congratulate the new board, but I see an item on the agenda that uh, says fire inspector. And one of the few positive things that a former town manager who left here for Vermont a number of years ago um, ever did for the fire department was to reinstate the fire inspector's position into that office uh, in the fire department. A very important uh, position to make that office a two-person uh, uh, operation. And I know that no means no, and I know that the budget failed to pass. I know that you're working on a default budget. But if this board and if this town can see any any possible way of getting a second person back into the fire prevention office, the fire inspector, uh, I think it would be a, a big step forward for the town of Hampton, a very, very important uh, position, especially in a town that's as vibrant and growing like, uh, like the town of Hampton is. So thank you. Thank you, Chief. <coughs> Mr. Jones, please. Good evening. Timothy Citizen Jones, 16 Dustin Avenue, uh, 
the material I'm going to speak on briefly tonight actually has more detail on, on a website known as HamptonBud.com. I encourage anyone, including what I'm about to say, will be there as well, or is there. I want to congratulate uh, Selectman, well, Waddell's not here, uh, Waddell is not here, so I guess in, in abstention I congratulate Selectman Waddell and Griffin and Bridal for their recent uh, success at the polls. I will work for compromise on differences that might arise during our respective terms of office within the bounds of the oath of office each of us has taken tonight. I'm also here tonight to assist you in finding savings within the default budget, as well as to right the conspicuous wrong done to the voters of this town. In short, this is an opportunity to kill two birds with one stone and save money as well. Last year, I discovered the town planner's position was created via an act of arbitrary power exercised by former town officials. For three consecutive years, the voters were asked via a Warren article to create the position of town planner. The people voted no each time. Shortly thereafter, a permanent, full-time town planner was hired. This hiring was an act of arbitrary power that denied the right of the people to have their vote properly respected. I have worked quietly on this matter with the previous board to right this deliberate injustice. The sticking point was really a humane one, however. Should we fire a man from his job because the job itself was created illegally? Times do change things, just as this board has changed with the times. We no longer have anyone in the town planner's position, so no one needs to be fired. But nobody should be hired either. I respectfully ask this board <coughs> to free up the town planner's salary by preventing the filling of this position until a vote of the people approves of it. To date, the people have said no three times. By not filling this position, you will free up money for other pressing matters and stop the furtherance of the abuse of the ballot box. As I said, on HamptonBud.com, you will find reference material that supports these statements. We took an oath. We swore allegiance to the Constitution and did so while invoking God. I can think of no more sacred promise than that. I recently discovered in our Constitution a quote, which I hope you will consider, that not resisting arbitrary power is absurd, slavish, and destructive of the good and happiness of mankind. These are not my words. These are the words of the Constitution you just swore to God in allegiance to. Please maintain fidelity to your oath. Do not fill this position and save money to boot. Strike a blow in favor of the Bill of Rights, which is where those words come from, the Bill of Rights of the New Hampshire Constitution. In favor of the people and of democracy itself. Take this rare money-saving opportunity to stop arbitrary use of power and to demonstrate the people that we, that they, those who they elect and trust us, that we not only hold their public trust, but we treasure their Bill of Rights as well. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Other public comment, please. Yes, ma'am. Good evening, everybody, and congratulations. Eileen Latimer. And um, I'm happy to see that everyone has been sworn in. However, the Budget Committee still has two positions. Um, I could explain the whole thing, but it would probably get confusing. Michael Pierce was elected to both the three-year and the two-year. It has been, it was his choice which one he would serve. For that reason, the second position, which is the two-year position that he chose not to accept, is vacant. However, that doesn't go to election now, it goes by appointment. and. We will do on the Budget Committee as we've done in the past and leave that wide open for anyone who expresses an interest and it will be voted on but within committee. 
not in the public. I hope I'm explaining that. As well as the fact that we had a resignation. So for that position, we also have an opening. Both of these positions will be for one year to the next election. And then they'll be filled accordingly for the time that was left in the original term. So to summarize it, we have two openings on Budget Committee. We know there were a lot of people who were voted for um, this year for Budget Committee. However, uh, we want to be very clear that people do still want to run, do still want to be considered. And for that reason, we will leave it open to have anyone interested in serving on these committees to apply by written letter or email. Uh, Fred, can we can direct those to you? Certainly. I would appreciate that to the town manager. And we'll leave the date open until March 31st. All right. And thank you. And good luck. Thank you, ma'am. Number four, announcements and community calendar. Selectman Wilson. Uh, I want to thank the public who turned out to vote. Oh, I'm so sorry, Richard. Please, I'm sorry. No, oh, please. Richard. you got to be faster. Quick. Yeah. Richard Rennie at 29 Highland Ave. Uh, just one more comment uh, on what Eileen said. Uh, if you looked at the list of the people who, uh, who signed in for the Budget Committee, uh, there was one vote cast for David Ortiz, uh -huh. but uh, he refused, <laughs> so I guess we're going to have to find somebody else. Anyway, uh, just a, a point, what a reason my being here tonight. As you know, uh, last Saturday uh, was the end of the uh, winter parking ban. That is, unless we get another snowstorm and have to enforce a... <laughs> I, I see no, the town manager no. shaking his head. But anyway, the winter parking ban was uh, lifted as of Saturday. Uh, and it has <coughs> created kind of a problem. I, I live on Highland Ave, so I'm a little partial to uh, what I see as far as the traffic going into the street. The problem is that now that the parking ban is lifted, we are, have the option of parking on the street. But if you travel up Highland Ave, you'll see that's, that is impossible. The snow drifts uh, along the south side of that street are so high and extending f so far out away from the curb, I say seven or eight feet, that it would be impossible to park curbside. Uh, and cars will now, if they use that uh, or do, do this option, will find themselves in the travel lane, which is a, you know, a, a safety hazard. Uh, very shortly, uh, you know, the uh, like I said, the parking ban has been lifted. Spring begins Saturday, so I anticipate a, an influx of traffic coming up uh, Highland Ave over the next few weekends. And there would be a, a, a safety factor here of people in the roadway. Uh, and whether or not uh, we would be subject to being ticketed uh, if we park out on that street being so far away from the curb, I, you know, that's, that's not my prerogative. But I guess maybe what I'm uh, asking is that, and then uh, further on too, uh, very shortly the uh, Ashworth renovation uh, will be taking place on the south side of that building or on the Highland Ave side and they will be installing uh, Jersey barriers. I'm not sure if they're going to be out on the street or uh, along the sidewalk, but again that's going to narrow that, that roadway again. So I guess maybe what I'm asking this board if it's possible to uh, implore the uh, public works to uh, make a sweep up Highland Ave and see if they can get rid of those snow banks. Uh, at least bring it back to the curb. Uh, of course, I'd like to see the sidewalks done too, but if, it, if at least they could remove the snow banks back to the curb to allow us to park on the street in a safe, yeah. safe manner. I watched that uh, <coughs> large grinder that they used along Ocean Boulevard and it did an excellent job. So again, I, I just requesting this board if uh, Public Works could remove those uh, hardened snowbanks that will probably be there melting until the middle of May <laughs> unless something is done to remove them. So I am requesting the possibility of having the snowbanks cut back to the curb. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any further public comment from those in attendance? Thank you very much. From a number, number four, announcements and community calendar. Selectman Wilson, please. Ah, back to the comment. Um, 
Actually, with Richard just speaking, I will remind all and sundry that the annual precinct meeting will take place on March 28th, Friday at 7 p.m. down at our new fire station on the beach. And my last uh, observation is that I wish everyone a happy St. Patrick's Day. And we'll point out that I am wearing, as I do every St. Patrick's Day, a St. Bridget's Cross that was given to me by former Chief of Police William Wren, who is now the uh, head of the Corrections Sir, uh, Agency in Concord. So I promised him I'd mention that and give him a little credit and have everybody have a happy St. Patrick's Day. Thank you. Selectman Griffin, please. Um, <coughs> I have a, a message from the Tuck Museum. Uh, it's about a, a program that they're presenting. Sunday, March 23rd at 2 p.m. Rita Palmer, a young nurse from Hampton, New Hampshire, joins the Army Nurse Corps in 1940 to see the world and thinks she has accepted a plum assignment in the Philippines. Instead, she practices battlefield nursing in a malaria-infested jungle and a harrowing series of events. She becomes one of the first female prisoners of war when her evacuation plan plane is damaged on takeoff. Ultimately, Rita and her companions are forced to surrender the, to the Japanese and join other captured army nurses at the Santo Tomas internment camp in Manila for three and a half years. This band of nurses became known as the Angels of Bataan and Corregidor, and their battlefield heroism, heroism inspired World War II patriotism, movies, and books. Wounded during an early Japanese attack, Rita was one of the first women to receive a Purple Heart. That's going to be Sunday, March 23rd at 2 p.m. And I would just like to thank everyone that came out to vote, and uh, I really appreciate, and I'm glad to be back here. Thank you. Selectman Bridal. Yes, I'd like first again like to thank all the voters that came about. <coughs> I'd also like to thank Dick Nichols, Mike Pluff, and Mike Pierce for their service to this town. It's never easy to volunteer and, and and do this, and sometimes it can be a thankless job. But I know a lot of people appreciated that, and I'd also like to thank the other people that were running too. Um, first, I have uh, the visiting hours for former selectman Cliff, Cliff Pratt were held last Saturday, uh, so everybody knows there'll be a memorial service April 26 at the Congregational Church. One of the projects that Cliff had worked on was the restoration of the town clock. This clock had been given to the town in 1897 by John T. Brown and had its home, a clock tower in the old Oddfellows building that was destroyed by a fire in 1990. The last decade, Cliff, Harvey Weber, and Bud DeRocher and others have worked on the clock to bring it back to working condition. In 2013, the voters approved the use of space in front of the center school to house a new clock tower for the clock. The last of the work to do was raise the necessary money to build that tower. The estimated cost is close to $100,000. About a half of that amount has been committed. Cliff's family has asked that a memorial donations to the clock fund be made in his memory, as in the fund has been established by the town to hold these donations. You may contribute to the fund by mailing your checks payable to the Town of Hampton Clock Fund, Parks and Recreation Department, 100 Winnicunnet Road. In recognition of over a recognition for gifts over a thousand dollars will be on a permanent plaque displayed in the tower. Paving bricks <coughs> inscribed with the donor's message are also starting at a hundred dollars. A matching pledge program has been established for the Kenny Bunk Savings Bank for the first seven hundred seven thousand five hundred dollars in donations. This matching gift will expire in June. For more information, contact Amy Hansen at the Rec Department. Mm -hmm. The other thing I have is the Hampton Academy is doing their first annual chili cook-off this Saturday. Uh, they are raising money for the 8th grade class trip, and it should be a lot of fun. It's uh, Saturday from 4.30 to 7.30, and they are also looking for cooks as well as participants. So if anybody has a hankering to make chili or, or go to or likes chili, that will be at, at, when at the Hampton Academy on Saturday from 4.30 to 7.30. And one last note is I'd just like to, uh, maybe we could have a moment of silence for the passing of Janet Fitzgerald, uh, wife of the uh, former selectman here. Please, would you lead us in and out of that moment of silence, please? Thank you. Thank you, sir.
so. Good evening, uh, Hampton. Uh, I'd like to offer congratulations to Mr. Bridal, Mr. Waddell, who will be here uh, for next uh, week's meeting, and Mr. Griffin on their successful uh, candidacy. Uh, in particular, I'd like to thank Mr. Pluff, uh, Mr. Pierce, and Mr. Nichols for their past service. It was long and it was extensive. And uh, of course, Mr. Pierce is going to continue to serve uh, to our pleasure. And Mr. Welch, I know that you'll be preparing uh, the uh, letters to them, thanking them for the past yes. service, for the board's signature. So we appreciate uh, their, their <coughs> service to the town of Hampton. Uh, to the candidates uh, for the other bodies that were elected and those that were not elected, uh, thank you very much and congratulations to those that will have the opportunity to serve. <coughs> and particularly on the election day at that uh, lovely high school, the uh, uh, town clerk, the town moderator, uh, there was a uh, fire presence there with somebody that needed medical attention. Uh, the police were there, and of course, Public Works did an outstanding job. And of course, uh, the, all the volunteers that do perform there, uh, thank you very, very much. Moving on to a little bit of housekeeping with, with the new board, um, and, and thank you for the confidence, board members and the, and the chair. Uh, in terms of our, our round discussion, uh, when items do come up, uh, a full uh, discourse, and I will naturally uh, yield first to uh, the Vice Chair and Ms. Woolsey, who is now the uh, senior member. Then it will go to Mr. Griffin, the uh, lead vote getter for the uh, three year, to Mr. Bridal, three year, and then to Mr. Waddell. And if we can get uh, most or, or all of our thoughts in on that initial conversation, and of course the opportunity to come back, and then uh, certainly for uh, Mr. Uh, Welch's input and in, in those that will be at the table. Moving on to appointments, uh, Roman numeral number five. Number one, Don Allison, the Eastern States 20K. Parade and public gathering permit. Please, sir. <laughs> a little visual aid with me. Uh, Let me get the board. It's not the greatest thing you've ever seen, but it could serve a purpose if you'd let me just before I hand that out. Um, this is the first time I've been before the board relative to this road race, so I'm going to just, if the people here will bear with me, I'm just going to take a couple of minutes. If you'd like to look at this while I'm talking, feel free. It's just a photos of what the route and some information on got a course map and so forth. It got a little damaged in the car, but will serve the purpose. Oops, sorry. Um, in any event, I'm going to just going to take two or three minutes, if it's okay, and just give you a brief summary of what this event is, so you'll be familiar with it. Where, what it's all about. Very short history. This event started 20 years ago. 1994 was our first year of having the race. Myself and another person involved in running. This woman had a vision for conducting a road race that would cover three states in one race that would start in Kittery, Maine, and finish in Salisbury and run along the New Hampshire Sea Coast. Her brother used to do this run all the time, and she wanted to make a race out of it. She needed someone with race directing expertise, and that turned out to be me. <laughs> and we, <laughs> we worked on the race together for two years. She decided she didn't like it so much. Uh, race directing and organizing, so she gave up on it, and I more or less assumed it from there. I must say that uh, also for your edification, I'm not a Seacoast resident, I'm kind of an interloper on this whole thing, but uh, the, the bottom line is we have successfully held this race through the years, and uh, I know that there's other events and other road races that have come, come along. I've kind of been around before the loco guy and everything else. I know he tends to uh, be a little more vocal than I am in terms of his own promotion of his races. And uh, it's it. I kind of am more reserved and quiet and quietly plug along with my race. And uh, we, we, we have a nice following. Uh, we've developed through the years. A lot of the runners participate every year. Others come and go. Um, and through the years, I have managed to also 
make some contributions towards the Seacoast community. I have the Girl Scouts and the Boy Scouts manage aid stations for our race, and I make a good, healthy contribution to each of those organizations, uh, as well as some of the other local running groups do the same. So I put a lot of my proceeds from the race back into the community. In addition to that, uh, I do bring a lot of money in, in the sense of the Ashworth Hotel. Uh, I pay them a small fortune to use the uh, ballroom after the race, and also I fill up that hotel, which uh, I would guess might not be full on a cold March weekend. So uh, anyway, my race is a bit complicated because it's a point-to-point -point event. Uh, it's not like one where you start and do a loop and finish at the same place. I, I start now, I should also mention the concept of the whole three-state thing has kind of been shelved the last several years because of the construction of the Memorial Bridge from Kittery into mm -hmm. Portsmouth. We've been unable to start the race in Kittery, so in recent years we've started it in Portsmouth High School and run down, and the finish line is the state line, Seabrook, Salisbury State Line. We more or less run past the state line and mm -hmm. take a left, and that's the finish in the runners. Have, but as I said, they haven't been able to do the three states, so uh, that has gone by the boards. And then in addition, about 10, 15 years ago, we started an additional race, a half marathon, because some of the runners didn't want to do the whole 20 miles, but they wanted to participate. So we added a quote-unquote shorter race, a 13-mile race, that starts up at Wallace Sands Beach and Rye and finishes down at the state line. So that that with that background said, let's get to this year. Uh, I've got yet another problem with a bridge, and that's the Sagamore Bridge up in Portsmouth, which we have traditionally run over. It's a green graded bridge. You might be familiar with it. That bridge is down for construction, so I can't run on 1A. So the, the bottom line is the only way for me to start at Portsmouth High School and make this race work is to run all the way around Newcastle. And the <laughs> chief of Newcastle has been very welcoming to me, thankfully. So I, I'm on about my fourth different <coughs> course in the last four or five years. But the, 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 the point of telling you all this is that the 20-mile race, in order to be 20 miles, is going to need to finish in Hampton Beach this year and not at the state Seabrook like we used to finish because otherwise it would be 23 miles and people don't want to do 23, they want to do the 20. But the 13 mile race is still going to finish down at the state line. If you've been able to follow this, uh, that's good because it's fairly complicated as you can see. The net effect of all of this is that it's got a, there is some logistics involved in the town of Hampton that need to be addressed. I met with Lieutenant Gilly, I've worked with him for years and years. We, we get along great. Uh, we met this afternoon and reviewed the whole situation. Um, so the 20 mile run uh, is going to, when we enter the town of Hampton, uh, we're going to go onto the sidewalk next to the seawall and they're just going to run on the left hand side. He's good with it. The police department's good with it. The state is good with it. I've had a long months of negotiation with the state parks and rec department, to, and I do have permit approval from them to use any state property that is in the town of Hampton. And our plan for the run, the 13-mile run, is going to come through first. They're going to follow that route running left along the seawall, and they're just going to run straight through the town of Hampton and then over the Seabrook Bridge and finish down at the state line like they always do. The 20 mile runners are going to come in, run left along the seawall. However, their finish area is going to be, if you know where the state memorial is, past the state memorial, and as Lieutenant Gidley suggested today, which is going to be a better route rather than finish there, to go beyond that, I guess it's a restroom complex mm -hmm. or a yeah. changing to that area. And then once they finish the 20 mile group, they're just going to keep walking straight forward. Uh, they park due to the uh, generosity of uh, Jake Fleming at the casino. He lets us use his parking lot. They're just going to keep walking straight towards their cars and the casino parking lot. If they, as I mentioned earlier, we have our post race 
gathering at the Ashworth Hotel. If the runners want to participate in that post-race gathering, they're going to have to walk all the way around and come back up to the Ashworth. So this, to my mind, is the best solution to uh, <coughs> making this work. And I should also mention I'm expecting a field of about 1,000 runners, 400 in the 13 mile and 600 in the 20 mile. And if I can almost add one last comment, um, I suggested to Lieutenant Kidley that the only fly in the ointment in this situation would be that I can see is if it turns out to be a I will call it a 60 plus degree day, which of course <laughs> the way this winter is going seems rather unlikely, but anything is possible. Um, if that happens, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of, uh, how do you want to call it, visitor and mm -hmm. beach going traffic in Hampton, in this, right along that area that the 13 miles are going to run along the, the seawall area and, and out of Hampton and over the Seabrook Bridge. If that's the case, uh, my suggestion to Gidley was that we cross over and run down Ashworth Ave. I should also mention in the history of this race, we have run down Ashworth Ave. That's the way we've done it. So we're changing the setup a little bit this year based on his suggestion of the, the whole deal and the fact that we're finishing the 20-mile race in Hampton Beach. Does any of this make sense? And if you have any questions, I'm more than happy to try to address them. Wonderful. Thank you, Ms. Johnson. Mr. 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 Chairman, uh, in light of the fact that this does not intrude on any of the side roads in Hampton, it's restricted to 1A and potentially a little bit onto Ashworth, I would move that we would grant the permit. Wonderful. Any further discussions or questions? So long as the police chiefs, mm -hmm. the police department's been checked and they're okay with it, I'm okay. If I get a second? Second. Yep. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Great. Thank no you. No problem. All right. All right. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very Thank much, you. sir. Yeah, I'm glad to have met you all, and congratulations to you all on your appointments. And Thank we you. Wish you the best of luck, and <laughs> perhaps we'll see you again next year for our 20th anniversary. Thank you. Be excellent. Number two. J. Diner, Conservation Commission, Rain Barrel, Sale, Painting Project and Auction, and Permission to Accept Donation of Supplies and Services for Rain Barrels. Good, Good evening, evening, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, sir. Nice to see you all. Congratulations to our new selectmen, Mr. Griffin, Mr. Uh, Bridal. Uh, welcome back to the board. Um, last year and the year before that, we worked with Donna Boardman, a teacher and art teacher at uh, the Hampton Academy, to have some of her eighth grade students paint rain barrels w that we then put up for auction. Um, both years it's been successful. We'd like to do it again this year. Uh, we're planning on holding a silent auction at the um, Hampton Garden Club's plant sale, which takes place in the parking lot of this building on May 17th. Um, as it was last year, the supplies for this project are being donated, and I'm here tonight to ask for your permission to accept those supplies. Um, it's not a cash donation, it's, it's product, so it's an in-kind donation. Um, they are rain barrels, and there'll be 10 of them this year. Uh, approximate value is $75 each, being donated by Aquarian Water Company. Wicked Awesome Paint and Wallpaper is donating roughly $500 worth of paint for the rain barrels. And Wayne's Auto Body will be applying a protective clear coat to the rain barrel so that paint job will last for years and years to come. And that's worth approximately $1,200. So the value of all the materials that are being donated is roughly $2,500. And um, again, I'm here to ask for your permission to accept that so that we can go forward with this project, which I think is great for the students at Hampton Academy as well as for the townspeople in Hampton. And we oh. Motion by Mr. Griffin. I'll second. Second to by accept. Wilson. Any further discussion? So long as you can guarantee there's no snow in the parking lot and they have their plans. <laughs> 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 if there is, we'll put it in the rain barrels. <laughs> All those in favor? Unanimous. And nice Thank you. Nice Thank job you very again, much. Jay. Thank yeah. you very much. <clears throat> Mr. Allison, you are Sorry summoning us. Yes. I, uh, there was a form that I was supposed to get. It was the state DOT form that Christina Ostman said that I'm 
folks had in your possession was because I need to send it into the state DOT. I'm not sure whether she said it would be here and I could get it. If you don't have it, it's all right. I'll get in touch with her. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Ask and you shall receive. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. Well done. Oops, thank, you. thank you, sir. <clears throat> Roman numeral number six, approval of minutes, number one, March 3rd, 2014. I'll so move, Mr. Chairman. Second. Any discussion? Any corrections? And all those in favor? That is two yes and two abstentions. Thank you. <coughs> and March 3rd, 2014, sealed minutes of non-public session. I'll so move, Mr. Chairman. And seconded. Two in favor, yep. to abstain. Thank you very much. Roman numeral number seven, town manager's report. Mr. Welch, please. Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, the work continues on the Church Street pumping station. All, all electrical work is complete except for the trolley hoist. Uh, with that work significantly underway, all painting except for the floor and, and wall cut-ins are complete. All the HVAC systems and backups, uh, the condensation drain is, is the only thing left to, to complete in that area. The, uh, the grinder uh, has been started and, and training has been completed on its operation. The gas line to the emergency generator is complete. Um, and the gas meter has been installed and water is in the building and operating. Wow. With town meeting completed, a number of warrant article programs are in progress. Bids for public works equipment, uh, as you know, had been started earlier and uh, had been completed prior to town meeting, so we had exact costs. The uh, gristmill dam and culvert are <coughs> awaiting award of pending grants. Collective bargaining agreements are being prepared by legal. Financial reports are in progress with the approved budget. And in fact, you have a financial report this evening from the finance department. Mm -hmm. um, if you're a veteran, over age 65, blind or disabled, please check with the assessor's office to see if you qualify under, under New Hampshire laws for an exemption or credit from property taxes. <coughs> Excuse me. Filing must be submitted by April 15th. There are forms to obtain and to complete, so please call them as soon as possible if you think you can apply. If you have a dog, please see the town clerk as your dog registration is due by April 30th. Fines and penalties under state law begin to be assessed after that date, and my understanding is there was discussion in the legislature on increasing the level of those fines. So, uh, as it stands now, if you go to the end of the the, the process and registering your dog, your dog could cost you over $100 in registration rather than $7. So, my suggestion is please come in and register so that we don't get to that point in time. Uh, if you've not signed up for the town's non-emergency notification system, please do so either online or forms are available on the counter in the town clerk's office, just outside. There are a number of other things, Mr. Chairman, that uh, have come to my attention, some of them dealing with items that had been um, previously discussed by the board but not resolved, and I'm just going to address some of those briefly uh, after this one. And the, the one I'm going to address right now is a change that's been taken up by the legislature that uh, will be heard in the House. Um, there will be a committee, uh, there will be a floor fight in the House on Wednesday, March 19th for House Bill 1591. That bill will require that any subject to be addressed for any reason at a selectman's meeting will have to be on an agenda. If it's not on the agenda, the board cannot address it, regardless of what it is. That sort of means that public comment will be out because you have to have previous knowledge of what's going to be said in the public comment and has to be on the agenda and approved. Uh, <coughs> there will be no more um, uh, sudden things that come to light, uh, perhaps uh, something that came to light this morning, for instance, the board may have to address. It will have to lay over for the next meeting. Uh, it will also increase the agenda time, so the agenda has to be posted at least 72 hours in advance, not including Sundays. So basically, the agenda is going to close before your meeting for the following week. Um, it's a kind of a disaster. Uh, so um, we're, we're asking that uh, uh, you call our local representatives and senator and ask them to vote against this bill, particularly on the House floor. It's what was the bill number? It's House um, 1591. 1591. Thank you. It'll be on for Wednesday. Use your influence, Rusty. Yes, please. Um, 
I know you have some information later on, uh, it's on the agenda later with regards to the default budget, and I'll be prepared to speak on that for you. Uh, the joint operations plan, we should uh, have a draft to you for your next meeting, the one with uh, DREAD. Uh, they've, they've received a draft based upon the um, changes that the board had directed me to, to, uh, to send to them. We're waiting for feedback from them. As soon as we get it, you'll have it immediately. Uh, but I think you need to review the, the, uh, the actual verbiage uh, in, the, in, the, in the thing itself. There was a town meeting vote this year with regards to the uh, uh, <coughs> material that's been taken up off the beach and how it's disposed of. So right. we'll no longer be accepting that. Um, I've given you a, <coughs> excuse me, a report in your handouts tonight uh, dealing with the tax rate projected for this coming <coughs> year. Uh, we are projecting that for an increase of uh, approximately 70 cents per thousand, 76 cents per thousand. Uh, and we're going to suggest to you, uh, obviously things may change between now and the time that happens, that um, you apply $1 million from surplus and reduce it by 36 cents a thousand. So you're going to be discussing the default budget later on, so that's something that probably needs to happen. We have begun the process of seawall registrations. Um, all of our paperwork is in order. We're going to be sending out the lease documents uh, so that we stagger these in over the next few weeks. We have about 20 sitting in line waiting for those documents. We're going to process those out and, and hopefully they can send that in, signed, and, and we'll get them on the agenda for your review. Uh, a lot of that material will be coming to you soon. Um, next, um, one of the things we discussed in the previous board was uh, a change in the building department fees uh, and I'll be sending you a pile of material on that uh, to see how you feel about that and where, we, where you think we should go with that. Um, we left open uh, because the board took it under consideration and we moved it forward. The hydrant fees for um, one of the subdivisions in town and, and the general hydrant fees themselves as a discussion point on whether or not the developer should pay for that, or the, the project development should pay for that in a homeowners association or a condo project, et cetera, et cetera, or whether the town should pay for it on the tax rate, subject that uh, was not resolved by the previous board. We have a number of individual uh, private roads in town uh, that are in condo uh, and subdivision uh, situations where homeowners associations are involved. Um, uh, there's collection of trash in those cases uh, that's prohibited by the town because of the condo documents. Uh, the question was whether or not before any of that action took place, some have already taken place, some is in the process, uh, about to go out, and some, some of it no, undoubtedly will again happen in the future, whether or not you wish to invite those folks in for a conversation with the board prior to anything being done. So you need to think about that. and, and, and be able to give us direction on how you'd like us to proceed in that area. That's it, Mr. Chairman. Wonderful. Thank you, Mr. Welch. Questions or comments for the town manager? Selectman Wilson. No, amazing on the Church Street pump station. Do you have a final date in mind, Fred? I don't, but um, I'm sure we're going to have one real fast. Okay. Great. Great work. Do you have it on your phone? Yeah. Selectman Griffin, questions no. or comments? Selectman no, Bridal. not at this time. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Roman numeral number eight, old business. Selectman Woolsey. Um, well, I suppose this could be old or new. I've gone ahead. I, I don't do uh, spreadsheets like Mr. Nichols used to, but I've prepared some documents here to share with you. Business that is left hanging, as it were, things that we're going to need to address. I'll be passing these out from time to time. I've got my name and the date on those so we can track date by date because we do have outstanding issues. And also, uh, I've started a list of projected 2015 Warren articles. I know that sounds early, but... <laughs> it's never too early. Uh, well, you never, let me no. tell you, time flies. Um, and the other thing I have asked of the manager is if we can get Mr. Schwozer and get together on the default budget because I want to see, we ha it will be our prerogative, shall we <coughs> say, once the default budget is contoured, however it has to be, uh, to get that fire inspector position 
uh, in motion. We have got to get that before the business season starts. So, I, and then Fred also uh, has assured me that the uh, Public Works Director is working on the um, a firm of engineers to get the calculations done for the uh, buy-in charge for the wastewater treatment plant. So those have already been set in motion. And we'll wait to hear from uh, Mr. Noyes as soon as that is uh, accomplished. Wonderful. Anything else? Anything else? Not at the moment. Wonderful. Thank you for those two documents you produced. Selectman Griffin. I would just like to say that uh, we need to start working on an idea to have a limited amount of 2015 Warren articles. And I think it was a big uh, disservice to the public to have as many Warren articles as we had this year. Thank you, sir. Anything else? No. Thank okay. you. Selectman Broidel. No, I, as we go through looking at our default budget, I, I agree with Mary Louise that the uh, the fire inspectors, if, if, if that was one thing I had heard from the public over the past couple of years is is, is some of the frustrations there and, and uh, if we can help that department out, I think uh, that's something we really need to take a look at. Uh, Mr. Chairman, also, yes, that's critical because that brings in fees and it's not a an inspection. It's a series <coughs> of inspections on these properties and with the building boom coming up, we have to see that the public is better served. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, I have no old uh, business. Uh, Mr. Wells, do you have any old business? No, sir. Roman numeral number nine and new business I think num I jumped number that. one. You, oh, you, right. you, uh, you, you did. And uh, fire inspection position. Is there any more comment on that tonight? No. We're do well, I think we totally look at the default budget. I think we need, really, really need to do it. But I think we, it's something we definitely need to look at. Absolutely. Okay, and moving on to number two, the default budget. Selectman Woolsey? No, same thing. We need Mike's help getting that beaten into shape so we know what kind of funding we have. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, barring any other comment, uh, Roman numeral 10, entertainment licenses under review. Okay. Any comment, Mr. Welch? Uh, Mr. Chairman, these are licenses, re re license requests that have been filed with the Selectman's Office. Uh, in accordance with a prior director from the board, we list the ones that are, are here. We sent them to the police department for review. We hope to have those back for your next meeting yeah. and uh, your attention at that meeting if they are all approved. The idea is to let you know they're coming. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you. And could you please uh, read those one through five, please, sir? Uh, Boardwalk Cafe, uh, the 401 Tavern, the world's greatest karaoke bar, <laughs> the Ashworth by the, ho the Sea Hotel, and the Ocean Gaming. Thank you, sir. Any comment from the board? Thank you. Moving on, uh, Roman numeral 11, consent okay. agenda. I'd like to make a motion to move it. Do I have a second? I'll second. Second. Any discussion? All, all those in favor? Um, Unanimous. Well, I, just one thought. Um, I apologize. Yes, ma'am. Item 2, the IT policy. I thought, I don't know why that's on the consent agenda, because I thought we were still finding tuning the language in that? I believe you actually voted at the last meeting. Oh, okay. So it's been put in that form. Okay. And it is ready for signature unless you. you wish to withdraw it. Okay. Okay. And seeing no motion I'll to behave. withdraw. Okay. Um, <laughs> thank you. Uh, and there is a, uh, a motion. There's a second. All those in favor? Unanimous. I'm, I'm going to Are oppose you? because of that IT policy. Okay. With one opposed. Right. Roman numeral 12, closing comments? Seeing none, Roman numeral number 13. Uh, Mr. Chairman, before you do that. Yes, sir. Um, I'd like to have the board go into non-public session under RSA 91A colon 3, Roman 2, section I. Uh, and that is consideration of matters related to the preparation for and carrying out of emergency functions, including training or carrying out such functions developed by town or local state safety authorities uh, are directly intended to thwart a deliberate act that would be intended to result in widespread or severe damage to property or widespread injury or loss of life. And is anyone making that a motion? I'll so move. Second. Second, Second by Mr. Bridle. All those in favor? It's a roll call vote. A roll call vote. Thank you, sir. Yes. Well. And the motion? Aye. 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 Yeah. Aye. I made the motion. Okay. Aye. And a, a motion to adjourn? 
I'll so move at 8.10 p.m. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Welch. Thank you, sir.